So with Diablos wanting their Water Dragon God prize, we get to see with the brand new chapter of 100 Year Quest that it's not going to be that easy for them. And the same can be said as well for Natsu and his gang as more and more uh, Dragon Eaters are coming apart to try and take this prey upon them uh, apart. And yeah, with the more addition as well, with the War Dragon God, they we're in a free uh, side pronged war right now that could end up very badly for every single party, depending if they're gonna like put a butt their heads together. This is now also the first chapter beginning uh, for Fairy Tale that is going to be uh, in the bi weekly status, as like I've already talked about in news. But just in case you did happen to miss that, from now on, continuing on from this chapter. 100 year quest is going to be bi-weekly so we're going to be getting it every two weeks instead of like the once a week on there i will say i'm a little upset with kind of how many pages were particularly in this chapter i was kind of like and i'm kind of wondering um for the fact that a is this going to improve the artwork um, um for the series and also as well does that mean we're going to get more additional content because this is one thing i've always been a stickler with where like I always kind of got a little bit salty when it came to monthly chapters or even bi-weekly stuff that I've seen previously and there were normally around about... I think Blue Exorcist was the worst case of this to me when I used to like care about that series and read it where there used to be chapters that came out that were about 13 pages to like 18 and you'd like wait a month or sometimes even two uh, for, some, uh, for some of those chapters to come out and it was like... Yeah, wait for a small little bit of dialogue next week, and I don't know, I feel like if people are going to be waiting a little extra incentive to uh, another additional week to get uh, some more additional fairy tale content, I think they would probably want a little bit more extra pages on there, at least uh, if they're going to do that, they're going to um, completely um, speed up the pacing of the series, as so far we've had seen it that it has had pretty uh, decent pace for the most part, um, compared to like what we're normally used to see with fairy tale, where it's like just just flat out just, that's done get that over and done with next like next like it just it was going by with like the original manga but with uh Kiria, um now attacking natsu uh lucy happy and all them and it's like this dragon eater you can see this very malevolent like sn uh, like smirk from her as she goes to tr straight up attack natsu and we get to see more of like exactly what the blade dragon can do where it seems like she can just make a air projectile just even by the swing of just her like arm. You can see that it goes and attacks Natsu and especially that she concentrated like all of her like um, energy into like sort of her arms and she is just able to pretty much near cut any material that we can see speak. So it's seemingly a lot more of a powerful version of kind of like what Gargiel's like uh, metal sword like kind of ability that he can use. And the problem is, is that, like, Na like Nasu is trying to fight off, however, he's at the disadvantage of, like, oh, shit, I'm in water right now, I'm completely useless in this scenario because I'm a fire dragon and I'm fighting in a complete opposite element, and the only person that can do anything is Lucy uh, using her Aquarius star dress, and, like, she was thinking, like, you know, if she was here, I would have been able to do a little bit more, but the fact that it's, like, I've got this from her, I still a little bit of their power, and she just goes and uses, like, Aquametria, she try and blast down on, like, Kidia, and there's still no dice for the most part, she's like, there is nothing that I cannot cut, like, out here, like, tidal waves, sure, why not, your clothes, because then we get into that part, it's like, oh, the Kia, my clothes have fallen off, and I'm like, yep, there we go, and I was like, oh, so, there goes that star dress, and poor Lucy has been made into more of your uh, little, um, etchy cue in the fairy tale, as that goes off and <laughs> there was one bit of dialogue that I found really funny which I think some people might appreciate the Kyria where she just said what uh, like as uh, like Lucy's just like ever since I came to this town and all that like what the hell like it's the second time that people try to do this to me and Kyria just puts damn you look more delicious in a different way so I was like oh all right then she, she full she full in appreciates the fine wine too and all that she like that's that's fine because if, if anything if you're gonna have like i mean it's not full-on conferred like kiri is a gay character but it's just like damn <laughs> she, she appreciates like what lucy's flogging for the most part and it's like 
Yeah, she won't um, knock down with her, like, Natsu and all that. I think, like, and, you know, the fact that she's an evil bitch as well. We'll just skim over that little part. Like, sure, why not? I'm, I'm always up for, like, a bit of diversity when it comes to characters like that because I know a lot of the fan, uh, fan boys and fan girls want something a little bit different, um... Lois well, but she hasn't. Uh, she has enough of this. Pulls out her uh, Virgo star um, star suit, which is like a swimsuit for the most part. Luckily, Gray comes out of his way to freeze um, this chick, and it was like, oh, what do we have here? And the little fish manager guy that they've been t uh, talking about is like, look, you're the humans that I chased off and all that, and he's like. What happened to the emissary water dragon god? What happened? And he's like, this is the guy that we s who sends the sacrifices to the god, and he's being killed. This is going to be huge. He's going to be so angry. And what will happen if he shows his face and sees this, like, snake over here? And right as he's, like, panicking, freaking out, Kyria <laughs> crashes out, breaks out again. It's like, oh, this is not that, like, this ice and all that. And it's like, this is quite a bunch of interesting people that we've got here. But let's let's just kind of wrap this up a little bit, like, because she wants to go. Urza comes crashing in, comes in with a sword. It's like I ain't having none of this right now. Sl like trying to swing down. Kyria pulling out a blade again. She's like, she's excited. She's ready for this. Then this armored dude just comes out, uh, doing some nimpo, like just doing some ninja moves. And he's in a full like plate scale like armor, and he's like, "You were late, Kyria Dodo." So I got worried. And it's like, what the hell? It was like another a member of Diablos who is known as the Armor Dragon and has a really weird ass name. Like this weird ass dude with his like samurai top knot, like known as Mad Mole. So we got Kyria and Mad Mole, and it's like this. Uh, at, from what we know so far is that this there's nothing that he cannot block uh, with the dragon eater with the strongest armor. That's what he's supposedly known. So, so far we've got sword and shield. So, kind of pretty much a pairing right now, sword and armor. I am very curious because this is a weird-ass dragon though, where it's like, no, I'm just really just defensively strong. Like, God, you ain't got nothing on me. Like, both of these two are like, got power similar to him with the blade and like just oh, his more increased durability but this guy the fact that the fact that he took an urza hit and then again we're talking about urza you know the uh, the reason she wins because it's urza so the fact that he was able to take that and he's like all right <laughs> we deal with this and considering that he's a little bit of a weirdo for the most part, I'm imagining that how he's going to be handled is like, oh, he's a goofball for the most part, or something it's going to be like. Uh, he's going to have some sort of weird gimmick for that. Because they do mention it's like, I would have been enough to take these guys on, like, uh, uh, armor model. Like, it's like, I would be able to take that on. It's like, no, we can't have that happen. And Scallion said to come back. So we can kind of presume that Scallion is either A, the guild leader, or he's a higher up uh, compared to these two on there. And it's just like, she's talking, that can't happen. There's this water dragon got around there. And then the worst part happens because he appears. And he is in his most holiest pose, just doing like the freezer shit, or just like presenting himself as he comes crashing down in his human form. And he's like, who dares dis like, disrupt my sea? And that's where we end the chapter, right there. It's like, you've got this three-pronged like, war going on right now. You've got Natsu's side, who wasn't able to do jack shit at this point. Which, one thing to note as well, is that he did drain the water from uh, this entire area. So you even see as well that like he just takes it all apart and makes it into his own power. So, A, Natsu can now do a slide drag a little bit. That's one thing that was I caught immediately off that. And he's like, he, he was there and he was like more kind of freaked out. That's like, what the hell? He looks like a human. Most of like, what's going on like with this dude? Uh, one, we don't see his little advisor lady as well. That was one thing that we didn't catch um, as well. I'm wondering where she was because she was the one pointing them out in the first place where these guys were. So, I want to know what the hell her deal is and like exactly what she's got in mind and how... Since we've seen him being, like, a little bit more, like, uh, lackadaisical and, like, we're going to probably understand, like, the terms of, like, exactly what he's here. And you can tell that, like, with Kidia and uh, Mad Mole, there's, like, no, these guys are here to cut, try and collect their prize. And I feel like Mad Mole is going to be the, like, we cannot handle this right now. Even I have to admit, 
we're either going to be seeing a test of strength from this guy, where it's like, he is able to actually fuck up someone like Mad Mole, where it's like, I can destroy you guys with ease, and they're going to be like, we need to pull out right now, and we kind of have to appreciate it. And like, Kyria like, is going to be like, oh, I'll get you next time, or it's like, oh, I'm going to get you guys uh, for my prey. So, overall, with this chapter, like, quite a few things we understand with, like, we understand more of the concept of the, how the Blade Dragon works. We get to see another member of Diablo's, Mad Mole, who is... He, I would say he's fucking, he's a weirdo. He's a goofball for the most part, like, with his whole, like, ninja thing. And the fact of the matter that is, like, he is a kind of an armor dragon for the most part. Whereas, like, he was just able to take an Urza hit, which... That that says more than, like, taking hits for an Akmogia at this point in Fairy Tale. Whereas, like, you can just do that, like... Overall, uh, like, from what we can see with all that, like, uh, especially with, like, um, this armor dragon, this blade dragon, fuck knows what else we're gonna be getting, like, uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, like, that's gonna be the theme of these dragons, like, these dragon eaters in particular, as are we just gonna be having weapons and armors for the most part, so, shield dragon, armor dragon, sort of, like, you know, blade dragon, spear dragon, lance, like, you know, we're gonna get scythe, like, we're gonna get just, um... All the Diablos ones are this specific class of weapon dragons compared to... We've mainly dealt, obviously, with fire, steel, you know, we're, we're, we're done with the basic elements. And, of course, we're seeing the dragon, or one of the dragon gods here, who is water, which was one element that was always... With the, well, obviously, with the exception of Julia just being a water mage, she wasn't a water dragon slayer. So, the fact that it's like... How is someone who, like, Juvia was a very powerful water mage that she was able to control her abilities. What the fuck is a dragon god going to do compared to, like, what she, we haven't seen before where she turns herself into, like, pure water. She, um, phases through things. She can morph. She can, like, use her water slicer, like, this whirlpools and all this kind of stuff. So, I'm very curious, to, um, what this guy has in mind particularly for this chapter. Then again... Considering with the pacing and everything, considering that we're now going to be on a two-week um, chapter, right? It's going to be weird because you have to think about how is this going to like be in a volume, um, picking up the volume run, and not to mention the fact that like now it's like, is this content now going to be more entertaining enough for fairy tale fans and also as well just readers as well, people that who enjoyed fairy tale but there wasn't like super diehard fans like some of the rest of us were. Like, um, is this going to be enough to keep them? thoroughly entertained uh, for like I can wait two weeks for this because I feel like if anything that is going to be the uh, do or die with this um, uh, entire series and not to mention as well because you're just going to be getting two chapters a month um, at this point I kind of want to know where we're going to be going how long the story is going to last because we're, we're already like seven chapters in and we've already encountered uh, God. We've already seen these Dragon Eater guilds. It's like there is a lot going on right now on there. So a lot of setup for this chapter and seeing the true strength of hopefully the Water Dragon God. And to, not to mention as well, we're seeing a bit of Kyria and Mad Mob. But let me know you guys think in the comment section down below. But that is all for me. Thanks always for watching. And I'll see you guys though next time.